let's take a look at an IGES file that requires a little more manual surface repair. Uh, we'll go ahead and open up that IGES file uh, and see what we have in the structure tree and the design window. We can see in the structure tree we have a few surfaces that need to be stitched together. And it doesn't always hurt to uh, see what we have before we try to stitch. So we can see that the first surface in the tree is the main body. And we just have a few pieces left here. So uh, it doesn't hurt to zoom in, take a look around, just see if the geometry is clean before we try to uh, work with it. Uh, and we can see here that we have uh, a pretty nasty uh, face right here, pretty corrupt. Um, and so just to see where it is in the rest of the model, uh, I'll bring back the rest of the model and we can see it's in an area here uh, uh, where there's a rib and, and we want to take that face and delete it. Uh, we can see that there's another one there just like that. So we'll go ahead and, and delete that one too. We can see that it's corrupt on one end, it extends through the model. Uh, it sticks out over on the side here. So uh, it's not even really properly defined. So we'll go ahead and we'll just right click on that uh, face and delete it. Now we have some other surfaces here. So the first step is always to run the stitch tool and stitch those together by clicking the check mark and we should have a, a single surface left. And this is definitely not a gap. It may be considered a missing face. Uh, and if we do try to just patch it directly in with the missing faces tool, uh, we can see that there's a bit of bubbling. It just creates one face. It's not really the correct geometry here. And, and it might be good enough, but, uh, we're going to do it in a more manual way and create a nice clean, uh, nice clean geometry here. So I'm going to undo in the upper left or uh, control Z, just like in office. And we're going to take a look at some of uh, the manual tools, uh, specifically blend and fill, which has a patch blend option to recreate this geometry. And uh, if we look at what we have here, um, we have a larger area on the side around here and another round here. And, uh, you know, we might start off with this piece here. It looks like we have some nice edges to blend between. So I'm going to turn on my blend tool. And the status message says to select faces, curves, or edges, or points to blend between. And you can control select edges of already selected faces to ignore TMC. So uh, we'll go ahead and click on one edge here, hold control, and select the other edge. And we can see that, and that the initial blend uh, just goes straight across. It doesn't provide any tangency here. So uh, the way to specify tangency uh, with the mouse is to use this button that says select guides and we'll go ahead and click this one. Uh, to select another one here we're going to click that again hold control and select the other edge and we could see that uh, it's now tangent to those two faces uh, but the edge really isn't. The edge comes around and then it kind of jumps up here so uh, what we want to do is use these edges to drive the model so in order to do that I'm going to click in white space to clear my selection and first, I'm going to blend between this point here and this point here. And instead of using this tool guide, I can use the Alt key. And if I hold down uh, the Alt key, I can click on this edge and it specifies that as a guide. And I'm going to hold Alt and Control to spe specify the other edge of the guide. And now we can see a nice, clean tangent edge there. And we'll click the check mark. Uh, we'll do the same thing from this uh, corner here to this corner here, holding control to select both, and then holding alt and alt and control to uh, specify that other edge as a guide curve, and we'll click the check mark. We have those two curves now, and now we can blend from this edge to this edge, holding down alt and alt and control to specify those as guide curves, and now we've completed that blend nice and smoothly. Uh, we don't need these curves anymore. We can hide them. We can delete them. Uh, and for this sec section here, we're going to use fill uh, patch blend. So we want to make sure we have nothing selected by uh, hitting escape a couple times to clear our selection. We're going to go into the fill tool and turn on patch blend on the left-hand side. A uh, nice quick way to select this loop of edges is to double click. And then if I hold down alt and control, I can select these three or uh, four faces around this opening to try to drive that patch to be tangent and we can click the check mark to complete that. Hit escape a few times to clear our selection and we can see that nice clean face in there for us. Last we want to create this section here and the first way I might approach it is to select this edge, 
control select this edge and turn on our blend tool and we can see that patch uh, created across there and if we click alt on that side we're able to specify that as a guide curve uh, here if i do alt control and double click uh, you'll notice that uh, the, it, the edge might not be smooth enough it kind of comes in and then comes back out and uh, we had that error message saying it could not create the guide curve uh, it might not be smooth enough that blending profile uh, the uh, guide curve so uh, let's approach this from another side. Let's double click here. Now, at first it selects the entire loop, but we don't want it to blend along these edges. We want to guide it uh, with that edge there, and, and we can see the line coming up. So I'm going to hold control to deselect these two edges, and now here's the uh, default blend from one side to the other. And just to make sure that it connects along this edge, I'm going to hold control and select that edge, alt and control for the other edge, and that will just guarantee uh, that it the, the blend between this side and this side connects along that edge. And we'll go ahead and click the check mark here. And now we can see that uh, nice, clean blend geometry uh, created from our model. So uh, a lot better than that initial missing faces that just creates uh, one large single face. Here, by using um, you know, a little manual process, uh, looking at the model, seeing uh, what should be tangent and how to drive that, we could just use our blend tool and our fill tool in order to uh, recreate the geometry correctly. And we can see that when I created that last blend, our model automatically turned into a solid in the tree. And now we have a nice clean uh, model that we can work with moving forward.